Hi, this is Chris with Ravenscock Studio, and today I'm going to show you some of the basics of drawing in Anime Studio Pro 7. And you'll see when the program gets up and running that they provide you with a character, Liz, who's kind of cute, but we don't need her for the moment. So go to the top, hit File, New, and you'll see a clean uh, working slate. One of the good things about Anime Studio is they allow you to import a tracing image. Uh, you don't have to do this at this point, but I, I will do it just to show you how it works. Hit View, Select Tracing Image, and I've got some head shapes that I just took a picture with my built-in camera, saved it, and uh, you can see them up there. The first thing I'm going to do is get these head shapes into my project by using the draw shape tool for the first one. When you select that you'll see at the top auto fill and auto stroke. Uh, make sure those are checked and the oval shape should also be selected. And what I'm going to do is hit the shift key and make myself a circle. Hitting shift just allows you to make a perfect circle rather than an oval. position it over the head and then with the translate points tool here you can use to move around I'll click outside of the shape to deselect the points and then I'm just going to bring those points into the shape of the head so that I have a rough head shape if you want to add more points to get more detail the add points tool over here Click that, it'll turn yellow to indicate it's selected. And you can just add a point over here and pull it in a little on the sides to give you some shape other than round. Go back to the Translate Points tool to fine tune them. So there we have a basic head shape. Auto Fill will fill your head shape, as you can see it's white, with whatever color is over here on the right side in the style palette you can see white was selected in order to change that color now we have to come over here and select the shape from the fill palette so go ahead and click that click inside the head and you'll notice it changes to a checkerbox type arrangement what we're going to do is change the color using swatches you come down here uh, where it says default PNG and there's two ways you can go. They provide you with a basic set of face colors and you could choose any one of these. As you can see it'll change the color as you click them or you can click and drag the mouse around and it'll change. And there is also a set of colors called Skin PNG and you can just drag your mouse around and you can watch the colors in that head shape change as you drag around. I'll just select one. I'll leave it there for now. The other way to change the color of that fill is to double click on this fill patch and you can see the color picker comes up with a slide bar for the color, a slide bar for the alpha channel which is the opacity of that color, and there is uh, a co color code in here, which you can copy and paste uh, into other areas if you need to. We're just going to hit cancel because I'm happy with the color we have here from the swatch. Some other things you can do, if you select your translate points tool again, we already went over uh, moving the shape points around. You can also scale the points, rotate the points, and there's a couple down here for perspective that you can change the perspective on the points, warp it, and whatever kind of neat. Uh, to get back to where you started, if you get stuck. Every time you hit Command-Z, it'll back up one step and get it back into the 
original shape. So remember that Command Z, if you make a mistake, you want to back up a step or two or three, just hit that Command Z key and it'll get you out of trouble. Another way to uh, create a shape is with the Add Points tool. And I'm going to deselect Auto Weld and Auto Fill because there's another way you can get color into a shape. What I'm going to do this time is click at a starting point and then just drag the line and everywhere you kind of need to change direction to hold on to that shape you just drag it around and let go of the left mouse button there and re-click it. When it comes around uh, auto weld is not selected so it's not going to weld that together. You have to put the cursor back over it, it'll turn green, and then click it. Now it's welded and it's a shape. But as you can see, it's not a very good shape. So what I'm going to do now is click Auto Weld and drag this one last time over it. And now it welded, you can hear a little click in there. But there's no fill. Well, to make this a shape, we have to uh, create a shape using the Create Shape tool. So we'll come over and select all the points of this particular shape by clicking on them. And then clicking the Select Shape tool, you'll see that the shape became checkered with no color. And now we hit the space bar to lock that in, and it's going to give us the color that we have currently selected over here on the right in the style palette. If you hit Command R, you can see that we have two head shapes with fill and outline, but those outlines are a little thick. So what we're going to do with this um, head shape, while it is selected, select shape and it is already selected go to the stroke width one now we select the fill in the other head shape it's also at four width we'll set that to one hit command R and you can see we've knocked the outline of those heads down to a thin line Another useful tool in Anime Studio Pro is, uh, or Anime Studio, I believe Dave Yu has this feature as well, is the Pan and Zoom, Rotate and Orbit workspace. For right now, we'll focus on the Pan and Zoom. The Pan allows me to bring this area anywhere I want to in the workspace, and the Zoom, by uh, using my scroll wheel, I don't even have to hit the zoom, my scroll wheel will automatically zoom. If you don't have a scroll wheel, you can select the magnifying glass and drag the mouse right or left and you can see the zoom. A good way to get a little more workspace out of the uh, canvas is if you come here to the timeline, and you'll see double arrows, you can drag the timeline down because we're not using it at the moment and you can make your workspace larger. If you hit view, reset, you reset that main view to the center of your canvas. So there we have two head shapes uh, made. We filled them with color and we've moved them. You can scale them rotate them perspective and now there's another way to select your points that I'll show you is up here in the drawing palette there's this select points tool that looks like a perforated box and you can just lasso things with it select two, one, two, three points it's really good when you're doing detailed work and you have to get in where there's a tight area of points that need to be selected. You can 
to select those points. Well, that's it for some basics of drawing uh, in Anime Studio Pro 7. You can certainly feel free to play around and do more with it, but that's all we have for right now.